Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining the Working Remotely in VR using VibeSync. My name is David Sapienza, and I run the internal studios here at Vive. So a little bit of background on me before we get going. Uh, I've been in the video game industry for about 20 years. I've been with Vive uh, for the last four, and I oversee multiple studios within the organization. We have, I would say, at least seven products that we've produced, or I should say released, since there's still a lot more actually in development. But today I wanted to talk to you about Sync and this new product that we're developing, that we've been developing, and why it's so different than all the other games we've made and actually why we made it. So not just what it is, but why. Um, but before that, a little housekeeping. If um, we will have a Q&A section at the end. If you have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to write them as we go. I believe on the bottom right of your screen, there's a little question section. So feel free to type it in there. And then once we get to the end, I'll be able to sort through them all and I'll see how many I can get through. All right. So without further ado. All right. So remote is the new normal. So these stats were actually stats that I collected before this whole COVID virus has uh, taken over the world. Um, but like I said, remote's the new normal. That's how it was. It's even more poignant today. Um, back then, it was 50% of at least American employees are involved in some sort of remote or virtual teamwork. And 48% of those don't even meet the people that they actually interface with ever. So it's a growing trend and um, the decline of face-to-face -face is just something that we're seeing over and over. Where we're at right now, I don't know where it's going to go um, even beyond this, if we'll revert back to normal, but e even still that there was always a steady uh, decline. So it's only uh, actually as of before this event happened, uh, only 10 percent of the current workforce in America doesn't work with any virtual team, which is uh, um, pretty interesting. OK, so while remote work can be liberating. You know, it saves you gas money from commuting. You don't have to send traffic. It's good for the environment. There's a number of benefits. You get more of your time back as opposed to, you know, uh, commuting. Um, it can also be isolating. Two thirds of remote workers consider themselves not as engaged in their team. They feel it's more of an us and them, or I'm out here and they're working there. And uh, they're always a bit detached. And 40% of those people also feel like um, they really do believe if they were there, things would be different. They would feel much more part of their team and have a better uh, relationship. And then, uh, you know, not only is remote work, you know, can be isolating, it does bring new challenges. Um, so communication, you know, there's, um, a lot of it's through text or instant message or email and people have to interpret what's going on. So the, um, the effectiveness of the information getting back and forth isn't always as good. Um, from a leadership point of view, your team relations um, are a little bit weaker. And then ultimately, I'd say probably the most important one is retention. We've seen a, um, a demonstrable increase of churn for people who are remote. And, you know, as a team leader or any studio head, the last thing you want to do is have retention issues because we invest so much into our employees and building up the team that um, it's just it's such a demoralizing for everyone when somebody has to leave and then we have to go find someone new. So this isn't new to us. You know, when I first came to Vive Studios, it was, um, you know, a new studio. Vibe wasn't even released yet. We were going to build a studio from the ground up. Part of it was going to be in San Francisco. That's where I'm based. The other part was going to be in Taiwan. So we did what normal teams did. We com we uh, communicated through Skype and then eventually through Teams and you know all the normal um, project tracking software of Jira or Trello or other you know Asana those kind of things. We've tried a, a number of things. Um, but we encountered the same type of problems that I was just going through. We had retention issues. We had people say that they felt more like an outsourcer because they weren't part of the creative process. 
um, engineers didn't feel part of the design. Designers felt engineers were doing different things uh, because we were remote. We weren't in the same room. So, you know, as a studio head, I'm looking at this team trying to figure out, okay, how can I build a better team or, or a better studio? And a lot of it really comes down to, well, what is a studio? It's really just a culture. So I'm, so I'm trying to build a culture. And from that point of view, it's like, okay, it's vision. We all have to have the same vision. We all know need to know where we're going. Communication, we have to be able to talk and make sure that we are communicating. And ultimately trust. I need to trust that you are listening to what I'm having to say and that we all know that we're all trying to go to the same place. So when everyone's disconnected, some of those things break down and over time it just kind of gets compounded. So Sync is a product that we built internally to solve our own needs. This was never a plan to take um, an internal meeting tool and release it widely, but we've been using this for about a year and a half internally. And it's been a game changer from the studio's point of view. So we've just been continuing to hone it, hone it, and now we're getting closer to releasing. And uh, this is why we're here to share it to you. So um, I'm gonna go into a couple more things just to help explain why or how we look at you know, this meeting uh, platform and what we are trying to solve with it. So first, what is a meeting? The way I think of it, it's the top four things are, you know, to provide information similar to what we're doing today. I'm just providing information to everyone. And you can see across the columns there as far as the team size. You know, we have small teams all the way to big events. This would be something more on the, the far right side. I'm just communicating to you. And that's what a lot of great 2D applications are great for. Another one would be making decisions. We're coming together to make a decision to hammer out some ideas or hammer out some um, situations and figure out what's the problem and then make a decision. Next would be brainstorming. A lot of game design or just design in general, it's just really brainstorming, trying to figure out how to solve something. And then finally, uh, building relationships. I don't think when, when a lot of people talk about meetings, they think about building relationships, but for me, as someone who oversees multiple studios, lots of personalities, especially a lot of creative people who have a lot of ideas, and you know, getting back to that trust, building relationships in a team is um, it's a very big part, and that's a lot of reasons why we have meetings together. Let's come together so we can talk about it, so we can all make sure we're on the same page. And I think, like I said, a lot of that gets overlooked when we think about these applications. So for Sync, we are focused on I would say the medium team and the small teams. We are not focused on the larger size or the events because out of necessity, we wanted to figure out how to build a team relationship and then be able to do all those other things, brainstorm, make decisions and provide information. So what are meetings like today? Um, it's funny how um, relevant this um, webinar is now but with uh, something like Teams, this is this is an ideal situation where everybody looks their best. They're there. They can be seen clearly. They can move on. And it usually starts out this way as far as good intentions. But more than likely, it's something like this where someone's camera's not 100% focused correctly, not positioned right. Somebody's background lighting's too light or too dark. Or worse yet, when you have the screens are offset. You're trying to see one person's screen and they're using a whiteboard or something else that you can't even see really. And then ultimately this is more common than not is after a while, everyone just turns their camera off. Um, why? Because it's fatiguing actually to be on camera a lot. We're not used to being on camera constantly. Um, you have an hour long meeting. Everyone's looking every time you scratch your face, you move, you know, everyone's you feel everyone staring at you, or at least you can be seen. Um, so it's actually, uh, th there's a toll that's taken when the video's on. So a lot of people ultimately then take uh, turn off the video. So that takes away a lot of the value of actually seeing someone, seeing the body language, seeing them as well. So, so that's one of the common issues that we were trying to address as well. Okay, so 
after looking at the you know the issues and then we're trying to figure out okay well what what is a meeting and then what makes a good meeting voice is obviously a big deal to make sure your voice is there it's clear everyone can hear you being able to pull up your content whatever that is whether it's your normal pdfs your weekly powerpoint meetings your your jira boards your project management tools and then obviously being present your physical presence in the room does make a difference that those are the three components that really brings in uh brings a meeting together so by bringing your to you into a physical proximity with another person that actually has the biggest impact we all know this i'm not going to you know deny that um virtual reality is uh is the panacea you're never going to need to meet people that's not the case but if you can't or you are remote it is the next best best thing than uh versus being right there so here is a picture of my stand up this is actually taken the other day um before people all got in and you can see we're all sitting around a table i know it's a stand up there's a picture of us standing up as well um because we can do that as well but you start to think about this well what is a stand up what is a stand up for you know it's really this it's a it's a highly effective meeting everyone stands up tells what they did since the last meeting what they're doing be before the next meeting and are they blocked it goes around quick but the point is to get up out of your desk go somewhere else around each other so you're away from your distractions you're away from uh anything else that can take you away from this quick little meeting so you're super focused and everyone can meet feel part of a team and then they can go back and do their work the beauty of vr is that you've got the headset on you're focused you're already there so we can actually have a meeting in a nice around a round table or wherever and actually discuss things and be focused you're not and i'm sure a lot of you maybe experienced this as well as you know people are on their you know um video conference call or a skype meeting and half the people are on their laptop looking at email or multitasking um but it really takes away from the meeting the meeting isn't as effective because not everyone's 100% focused. With VR, that really helps. And we've seen that. Uh, we've seen the engagement level of our users, especially the introverted ones who tend to not talk in meetings, though they've come out of their shell more in VR. Another thing that we, are, uh, we allow you to do is to, every meeting room we have has this big screen. You can sh uh, share this big, big 40 foot screen so our meetings can like you can have all your kanban board or whatever you want to discuss right there so if, say it's a stand-up you can have all your information there for your priorities and go through it right there so not only is it just being able to place a place to come together but it's also a place where you can see your status and then review it in real time okay so i want to go into a little bit just about the the philosophy behind our rooms why we designed them this way um, so you can see that they're it's a circular room the rooms are 20 meters apart there's a gap there's always a gap between the main floor and then the outside area this is a sci-fi style room the reason is is we don't want people to get into vr and then just want to go explore the idea is yes you can teleport anywhere in that center area but not go beyond so it focuses people. So it's still 20 meters apart, so they feel there's still room, but it's not, uh, but it doesn't feel enclosed. Here's another room we have. It's called the Bay. It's a different, definitely a different feeling than the sci-fi room. This one is more of an open air uh, on the water. You actually have some ambient water uh, crashing up to the on the rock sounds it just gives you a different vibe so depending on what kind of meeting you have you might want to change what kind of environment you have the next one is a skyscape this is just a cloud room where you're if you look out in the horizon all you see is clouds so no distractions at all uh, the clouds do slowly move overhead so it does feel like there's some it's alive a little bit but uh it's just uh it's a, this one we use a lot for our design kind of brainstorms just open high in the clouds all right and then we have a lot more to come i won't get into 
any more of that. I just wanted to give you an idea of why we did it that way in this kind of this round room, and we can pull up screens wherever we want. All right, so getting the environment and then getting you there. That's another thing is how you are represented there. We wanted to make use of era cell phones and that easy selfie. You take a selfie of yourself, you select what kind of body you want, you can select what kind of hairstyle, add glasses, change your skin tone a little. You can add, you can see here in the middle, I've obviously changed my hairstyle, added a, I think some sort of mascara, some glasses, a beard, you can do whatever you want, or you can make yourself just like yourself and get you in. The idea is you go in, take a quick selfie, you, you hit one button, it uploads to your profile. The next time you go back into your sync meeting, that's your character. You don't have to spend too much in the game, in the opening editor, adjusting your character just to get you to look how you want to look. You can harness the, the mobile application and get in. If you don't even want to do that, then we have a bunch of default avatars as well. But getting your likeness is something that we felt was important. So when I look around my team, I see my team members. And we didn't go um, too far into the consumer business. We're sticking more on the enterprise, the so real business. I want my team to look like my team. Um, they want to do something crazy. They can go to VR chat and some of the other uh, more consumer-based stuff. But this one is really focused on the meeting and on, in your team. And so you can see, too, that this is a full-body avatar. That was something that we thought from the get-go is that as, from a professional standpoint, we wanted you to be present, your full body. And we've been focusing on that. So this next one, I'll show you some of the work we've been doing on our own IK solution. So you can see the natural movement, the, the walking, whether it's room scale, it's more fluid, the elbows, they're in a much natural, more natural position. And this is actually a much older video. And you can see if you sit, we actually put a chair underneath you so your avatar doesn't look awkward. There you go. So that was a little sample of it. And we have three patents pending. We are continuing to evolve it and work on um, this because we do believe it's a service. And we want that. Ultimately, we want the avatars to fade away. You and your team, you just want to come together, talk about what you want to talk about, and not have the meeting be about the avatar tracking. Oh, that broke down, or somebody took their headset off and the avatar goes crazy. No, it fades away quickly. It responds correctly. You come, if you want to sit down, you sit down and it looks natural. So, and of course we support all ethnicity types as well. So next I'll just quickly go uh, um, over how do you even get sync and how do you even create meetings? Cause that's a big part of a meeting is how do you even set it up and how do you go? So just to get sync right now, we are in a closed beta. So in order to get it, you need to be invited and then you accept the invitation and then you'll be granted access. But very soon you will be able to download it yourself. One, through the Viveport store, or two, you can just go to sync.vive.com and hit the download and be able to download it yourself from the PC viewer. So this will come with, uh, as an installer, installs it directly to your desktop. So some people have work laptops where those work um, IT, Professionals don't want a gaming platform like Viveport on their work PC, which is fine. So we support that. This will also come with a viewer mode as well. So if you're non-VR and you have PC, you can still join. But primarily, this experience is uh, designed from the ground up for VR. If you have a mobile platform like the Focus, then you'll be able to search it through the store, uh, the mobile store. And then as far as mobile, a viewer only, that's something that's coming soon. So we'll talk about that more uh, at a later date. Okay, so creating a meeting. Oh, you okay, you wanna have a meeting in uh, VR, that's great, how do you do it? Right now, you go, just go to our website. You can see this is your landing page. You'll see your daily calendar, any existing meetings that you already have, and you can just go ahead and create meeting. You select which room you want, put in your information, the time, the date, the name, the subject, and then you'll be taken here to your landing page. This is where you can see your uh, room ID, your password, and you can simply just copy this information. And I use Outlook. I put it in my Outlook. I send it off. 
and then everybody will get this information. Part of being so, um, I guess, enveloped in VR, we know that um, there's friction there. VR, you know, sometimes there's, um, you know, just from like a, a typical Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting, where it's just one click away and you have your webcam, it's already set up here. You got to put the headset on, you got to log in with the room ID and password. And we know that the, um, you know, virtual keyboards aren't as efficient or as fast. So we actually added the QR code scanning ability. So all you have to do is when you go to the opening main page, you can you can choose to use the type in the room ID and password, or you just hit scan QR code. You can scan the code and that'll take you right into the meeting. So it, a big effort from us is just the friction. Get rid of that friction. It's great uh, if you're on the go and you have a an all-in-one headset. You got your meeting, it's already on your phone. I can just open up that QR code, scan it, and it takes me right to the meeting. So that's been a big benefit. And then uh, you also have the synchronize here. And I'll get into this a little later, but this is a big synchronize button, or this is the synchronize button that allows you to pull your own files into this meeting room. Okay, so once you're in a meeting, we need to give you some tools. So I'll just go over a quick overview of some of the tools that we have. Now, I'll start with this first one right here with this this file folder. This is important because this is where you are gonna access all your files. When you get in, this is your virtual tablet. Think of this as your uh, laptop. Nobody else can see it but you. You're there, you click your files, those are only your files. Like I said before in the previous slide, you hit synchronize, those are files that you've sunk into this meeting room. So we connect to your OneDrive. So we used OneDrive. That's one of our uh, um, big cloud providers that we support. So I can s identify any folder and I'll hit synchronize and it's going to securely pull those files into this room, this tablet, so I can see them and eventually share them to anyone else I want to. Or I can even uh, synchronize to a local drive on my PC. So that's where you access your files here and you'll be able to see them here. This is uh, private notes. The next one is private notes. This was um, such a great, uh, it's one of my favorite features in our app in the sense that everybody's talking, everybody's, I wanna take notes, but I can't. Here, I can just simply open up my private notes, speak my action items, like follow up with Bill about X, Y, and Z, follow up with Paige on this. It'll instantly transcribe my voice to text and capture it right there. When I am talking, it's muted to everyone else. So those are my private notes. Nobody hears me and nobody sees them. We also have a, a mirror, mirror to big screen. So what this actually does is if I'm sharing or somebody's sharing something to that big screen I showed earlier, and maybe you don't have your glasses on, your it's a little bit blurry or you can't, you don't want to actually teleport up to go see it. Here, we have an option where you can actually mirror whatever's on the big screen and have that appear here. So you have your own private viewing of it and you can actually look up closer to it than you want. Of course, we have 3D drawing, we have a laser pen and we have a screenshot tool. So you can go and take screenshots of the meeting or of any annotations or uh, whatnot. Now, I think what's, as I was saying before about friction of just getting into the meeting, part of the idea is how do you get this information out? Oh, it's great. We had it, we loaded up a model. We put in some 3D, um, some annotations. I made some notes. When you're done, you take, um, since you've already synchronized a file to this meeting room, when you're done, all your screenshots, all your notes are going to automatically be sent back to that folder. So there's no frantic, uh, pressure to take off the headset and quickly write up all your notes or to transfer those files. It's already night, uh, back on your PC. So it's about getting into the meeting, having it quickly, do what you got to do and get out without having to uh, frantically um, you know, type up your notes quickly. So we put a big, a lot of effort into the approachability of it. Of course, this is your tablet. It's your private viewing and one of the big things is your visual real estate. Where that is positioned might be blocking your view. So you can always move that to wherever you want. Let me make that easy for you. 
All right, and this is just a screenshot to show you like this is a picture of one of the games we developed called Super Puzzle Galaxy. It's just a picture, you hit the share button and then it appears on the big screen for everyone else to see. All right, now as far as the file types, we built this tool, like I said, for ourselves. So we used all the tools, or we started with the formats that we use, which primarily are all the 2D documents. Like the, we make PowerPoints for our weekly meetings. We we make videos. So we use uh, MP4, Move, or MOV, we, um, PNG, JPEG. Uh, as far as 3D files, we um, support um, the most common ones, which are OBJ and FBX and especially Unity Asset Bundles. So those are some of the big ones. Um, but I also wanted to note too, we also support video that's embedded in PowerPoint. So you don't have to change the way you do your work to make it work in sync. If you already have a PowerPoint, you have your videos, they're already embedded. When you put synchronize it to the file, we will be able to display both. You're not gonna have to, like some of the other solutions where you're gonna have to pull those apart and then stop sharing the PowerPoint to load up the video and then go back and forth. All our stuff is completely integrated. Okay, so we can also, you know, we have tables. This is actually um, my team that we took the other day. Everyone's sitting around the round table as we took, or uh, the long table. We actually have uh, some auditoriums as well. You can even see uh, some people are uh, practicing some social distancing even in VR. Not completely necessary, but it's their choice. Okay, but so for, for me, getting there, having the, you know, building the team relationships so we feel like we're one team in one spot as opposed to us and them. Uh, oh, Taiwan's over here, San Francisco's over here, oh, Seattle's over there. No, it's, we're all together. That's a major benefit. And if that was it, and that's all that this was for, I would say it's definitely a win. But as a content developer and actually producing VR content or just gaming content in general, I think what this what this can also provide is the ability to um, help your 3D creation uh, take it to the next level by being able to see it in 3D. And I'll get into a, uh, a real example. Okay, so for some of those, for some of you, you may already know what this place is. This is called the Origin, as an example. So when you buy or when you get like the cosmos and some of our future headsets you have a landing spot where where do you begin when you first put on the headset this is your home environment so we had to uh, help develop this this home environment across multiple uh regions of our company from our seattle office taiwan and san francisco prim primarily so we had to design this so where are you gonna so we designed it and built it in sync here's a little example I'll give you an overview of what this is. So there's an interior area here. We have a skybox. There's the opening shot. There's some reflectivity of some water. There's water moving. We have a little pond area. Okay, so I won't make you go through the whole thing. It's just a little promo shot, but I wanted to give you context of what it is. Okay, so the next shot. So this is actual myself and another colleague in that bay room area, and we loaded it in. We loaded that entire level in, and we're able to work together remotely, but in that environment. And you can see we have some annotations of drawing. At this time, we were going through what could a Christmas theme be, and we were drawing some candy canes and some, making some lights on it. Here are some other examples that we've been able to use. So you can see we actually have team notes. We were talking like, but you know, should we freeze the lake? We were talking so we can just walk around, put up these notes, walk, leave it there, and then um, have multiple people to come in there. We can play around with the lighting. I think having the sense of not just reviewing a 3D environment over somebody's shoulder, looking at um, somebody's uh, screen, or even as just a viewer by yourself. The fact that we're here together, especially with other people across the globe, and you're trying to show them, you can actually use your body motions, your whole natural um, self to help describe, well, here's the feeling I'm trying to go for. I want this tree to be much bigger. Can it be this high? 
you know, what if it could do this? And you can do that live on the fly. I can scale it. We can rotate it. We can do a lot of different things inside the meeting together. It's been a, a huge benefit, especially for team morale, for us to build together. So when everybody leaves, we all felt like we did this together, as opposed to somebody doing it by themselves, writing up their feedback, and then sending it off. So now I'm going to give you um, a tease of something else that we're also working on, but it has to do with this level as well. So. So this is that same level we were working on. And this is uh, in the San Francisco office, pre-COVID. But you can see one of my artists is actually looking at that level. And, oh, let me, uh, there we go. Okay. Let me just pause it here for a second. Okay. So what's great about this, so this is the XR mod plate uh, or XR face plate. And you can see that, uh, Mart here, who's uh, wearing it, it has that on. He's able to put that in. I'm actually wearing one as well. So I could see him, because we're in the same office together. He loaded up the model, so I can turn around, we can review it together. And then as we were talking about like adding some snow when we were having some issues, we called in Todd here, who works remotely. He is able to come in, work together in an AR slash VR mode together. So you can actually call in remote people. So this infrastructure that we're building for sync that allows people to come together isn't just for vr which is great for remote teams coming together but ar where we can come in we're in the same environment and we can still collaborate together and then at any point say we're here we're talking about things and we want to switch to vr mode and then play with scale then we can do that and now they're there inside that same level looking at some of the finer details so there's a I'm not going to get into the XR mod plate to, or faceplate today, but we do have a talk on May 5th. So just teasing that up, I think that's going to be worth uh, your uh, time to come listen to Jad talk about that. All right. Okay. So, so that said, uh, I think another huge benefit of having this virtual space to come together is that we can allow for more spaces to be just there. They're just present 24 seven. So think of it as a virtual studio that's always there. You can put it on, you have your same team meetings, you can leave it. I can leave that level of the origin up, come in, do, leave all my notes if I want. And then I have to leave and people come in maybe later at that night from a Taiwan side, they're, they're, they're morning and they can see all my notes. So it's not necessarily, having to be there at the exact same time for a meeting, but it can also be a virtual space that you can just leave and be persistent, which is a great benefit. I won't get into the details too much of the security. I, we're gonna uh, um, provide a ton of information uh, in the coming weeks about this, but what I can say is um, we've spent, um, a gr great amount of effort to ensure that this is a secure solution. Um, we're not just a, a small indie studio trying to do this. We are harnessing all the infrastructure and backend inf um, power uh, that HTC provides. So to be able to support this on a global scale, we've already released in China. We're already, um, we're, we're coming out short, shortly here and you're gonna be able to communicate um, seamlessly across with a high level of confidence that this is a secure solution, including things like your voice is secure, your files are secure, all your content, everything that you make that is there is uh, perceived or we consider uh, personal private data. So we, we don't handle it. Uh, we are not in the cloud business. We are not in cloud storage. So we are not storing your information. Rather, we're just allowing you access through your token that you accept to synchronize to see it and then it'll send it right back. So um, you can rest assured that um, this is a secure solution. Uh, we support all the headsets uh, for the Vive ecosystem um, from the high end uh, and you know the consumer stuff to the new stuff we have to the eye tracking. We even have a lip tracker that we support. So if your avatar, if you do happen to have that lip tracker module and you talk, we'll be able to track it and even to our all-in-one. Uh, focused model uh, for those uh, who have that, which is great. 
So in, in closing, I just wanted to kind of reiterate that, you know, we built this as a tool for ourselves to help take our remote teams, but make us feel like it's one team. It has been um, uh, something that we did on the side, but then because we saw so much benefit that we've actually, the studio now is primarily working on this. This is our main product. And um, as we started to develop it and let more people use it widely within HTC, we've gotten so much positive feedback. That's when we decided to release it. So we're going to be releasing uh, soon. I look forward to this in the coming weeks for more information on exactly when. Um, but uh, I, I hope you give it a shot, even if um, um, not everybody has a VR headset right now, uh, we are going to be releasing a, a non-VR um, viewer that people can still join in, but obviously the, the full experience is VR. Um, our focus is primarily, is you know, it's about team building, making sure that everyone feels connected. It's an approachable design where we're gonna slowly build features, but it's, it's going to be uh, not overwhelming for people. And that's a, it's a big deal for us. And then of course, it's gonna be a secure solution. So, so that's it. Just wanted to say thank you for taking your time to listen to me. And we will have, uh, if there's any questions, I will answer them. So I see a couple here. Just give me a second to start to sort through some of these. Okay, so let's see. So how many users can sync support? So right now we are supporting 30 users at a, in a single time. Um, you know, uh, the Two Bear Studio, which is prim who's responsible for building this, uh, we're at 21 right now. So we have our full team meetings in there. Um, sometimes we have a guest come over and we have support 30. So that's our max right now. Uh, will we support more in the future? I'm not sure, but that's not our big focus right now. It's more for that kind of, you know, 30 and under mark. So let's see, how long can someone wear the headset? So I think that really um, depends on the headset itself. Uh, and, you know, really like how you wear the headset. Some people like to wear it really tight. So it's, it's fixed to their face. Uh, the Cosmos has that more of that flip up front where um, it's a little bit, it doesn't rest on your cheeks as much. Um, I would say though, um, you know, I've been, obviously I'm probably the uh, a worst case scenario because I've worn this for, you know, multiple hours at a time and it's been fine for me. But I would say like the Focus, which is the all-in-one, uh, the max is about an hour, hour and a half before people, um, uh, feel like they have to take it off just because it is more intensive. Um, you do get more out of it, but it's more intensive. But um, I would say the average, if I look at some of the data, the average meeting is about, um, uh, I think it's around, it's a little over uh, half an hour to 40 minutes. Does VibeSync plan to support all PC VR headsets? Uh, the answer is yes. Our, our goal is to support any platform. Whatever device you choose uh, to use, then you should be able to use Sync. So we're going to be agnostic. Now, obviously we're part of Vive and we're always going to support Vive and some of the future features of Vive, we will always support like the eye tracking and lip tracking and some of those extra ones. So we'll support on Vive first, but as, those, um, as we get it ready, then we will start to roll it out. Um, I wouldn't, I don't have a date for Oculus, Quest or um, Rift support, but um, I would say before the end of the year for sure. Will it work with Cosmos Play? Yes, it will. As far as the enterprise verticals uh, that I see is the most beneficial, right now I would say um, teaching has been, I think just because of this, um, the current situation we're in right now, um, teaching has uh, really gravitated to us, and not even so much for kids, because a lot of kids don't have the VR headsets, but educators teaching other educators and working together, um, that's been an, um, a big, um, I'd say, marked uh, jump for us as far as people interest and people being able to use it day one, because they deal with all 2D material anyway. Um, so just being able to have all their files, their syllabus, all their things, 
they synchronize one file and then all their colleagues can be in the same one so they can uh, discuss things but again feeling more there um, but I would say uh, I'd be remiss to say game developers because we are game developers internally and we are using this all the time so as a someone is a leading a team who likes to just review things i can come in with my team regardless of where they are and see their stuff so um, i can't forget uh, uh who we are as well so let's see what is the biggest challenge your testers shared as feedback for doing meetings in vr that you were able to solve and implement in vibe sync So as far as testers, so I think that's kind of, um, it really kind of depends on the user. I would say, and it's something that's not quantifiable in the sense, it's not like a bullet point, like, like oh, you can uh, uh, easily capture your notes and then synchronize them back to your PC, which is a great feature. But like I said, and I was trying to hint to in the very beginning, it's this feeling of, us and them especially if you're one person who's remote and maybe two or three people are working together you always feel like the outsider you're not part of that team or um, there's the you know we always got it originally it's the san francisco side versus the taiwan side that all went away that's that's probably been the biggest um benefit is that now it's just the studio and we all just meet as a studio as opposed to two cameras looking at a bunch of people um and two separated now we're all in so it's um it's hard to describe but it, it is a cultural thing that does change uh, and so i'm really uh i i do think that's uh, probably uh one of the biggest benefits of vibe sync so what would a day-to-day -day flow look like for a team of developers using sync so um, I assume, you know, I've, I've worked with uh, multiple studios throughout my career. Um, every studio works slightly different. Uh, our day to day, I can give you through that. So we have a couple of persistent rooms, one that's always set up for the designers, one that's always set up for the artists. And, um, and then we have our daily scrum. So we come in day, in the mornings, we have our scrum meetings. It's just a reoccurring meeting. Everyone kind of goes around the room does their thing some people end up staying to finish discussing something or they break off right now they all go break off do their own thing and then we have our normal design reviews we come back in sync here's some here's my new pitch they'll share it to the big screen they'll go through the pitch um the artists um I'd say as far as file formats it's really um at the end of the day they save their files as obj's or FBXs, or even a Unity Asset Bundle, which is great because there's animation and from a UI flow, you can bake your animation or bake your uh, interactions into it, load it in, and then I can come in or other people can come in and evaluate it. Um, but usually it's it's part of our workflow now to have our standing daily reviews or uh, weekly reviews, um, but the artists and uh, designers need to uh, just make sure that they're saving out their file types at the end of the day, and then they upload it. So. That way everyone can ac have access to it. So any plans for features to be added that are unique or beneficial for developers and programmers? Um, I mean, the easy answer is yes. I would just need to request like what, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Um, you know, we've, Vive has invested in like primitive, which is a code reviewing, um a way to visualize code in 3d is that something you would like i think this is where we're we're in still kind of like the early days to open it up to figure out what other people would like since we're going to shortly go from closed beta to open beta where you're not going to need me to personally send you an invite you'll just be able to download it you'll be able to send us like sync support at htc.com and put in your requests and then we will uh uh, we will evaluate it. I'm absolutely uh, bullish on this. I think, I know I'm drinking my own Kool-Aid because we built it, but this is a great tool for us. So if there's something that's going to make it beneficial for you, I would say just let us know. And, you know, from developers, speaking to developers as a developer, then uh, yeah, let's make this work and let us know what you want. So we're very open. 
our roadmap is uh, open at this point. Um, I'm just reading the next one. It says, what support is for non-VR ecosystem devices like? So as I said, we are supporting a PC viewer and a mobile viewer is coming. We are, um, I'm just looking at some of the other questions. I think, yeah, we're going to be platform agnostic. So that's, um, it's really just about when we roll that out and how meaningful it is for the amount of features we want to support. So um, here's another question. Uh, I've tried different platforms that provide importing 3D files, but there's always some sort of problem with textures, formats, animations, et cetera. Do you have this issues? So short answer is yes, we do, because there's a ton of different file formats and even an OBJ file, you can save it in a different way uh, from different programs and it embeds with certain you know, uh, default settings or texture size resolution. So we actually have a guide that walks people through and um, how, how to save it out. Um, I would say that in the coming, before the end of the year, we're going to be, we are going to be developing tools to make it even easier or we will convert it for you. So you would upload it to like, think of it as a plugin that you can uh, um, export it out that's sync friendly because I don't want you to have to change your workflow just to get it into sync or save it out. But if we can create an easy plugin that will auto convert it for you, um, that's that's high on my list. But uh, I can get into those details later if for, uh, um, or we can figure out maybe if there's some small fixes or changes that we can do on our side to make it easier on your guys' end. Okay, is there a limit on the data size of the files I can work with or have a in a shared persistent room in sync? Right now, um, our file sizes are actually quite large because um, we are still testing this out. So I would say that um, we don't have a limit as of yet. I think uploading files to your room, our limit right now is two gigs, but um, that is something that we're gonna be kind of fluctuating over time to figure out what's what's the what do people really need so I get it's focused on enterprise level meetings do you see any emphasis being paid and it's used in higher education either in the classroom um, absolutely I think um, the um, enterprise is a focus, but enterprise is basically meetings, meeting, and there are different types of meetings. Uh, education, we are already talking to higher education, and this is a perfect format, so we, that's fine. Is it going to be free? I can't answer any pricing questions yet, but in the coming weeks, uh, look forward to the full um, release of all the information. Can we get early access? After this, we will provide information on how to request access. Okay, let me scroll down with some more questions here. Yeah, so the launch of this product and launching of the non-VR headset, um, again, stay tuned for in a couple weeks, we will have all that information ready for you. Can I make a pre presentation inside of VibeSync with a colleague? That is something that uh, we have uh, not uh, focused on. We know most people create their presentations on their normal 2D and then sy synchronize it. Now, collaborating on one, giving feedback, that that's one thing. But actually building a presentation, uh, that is not something that is not supported yet. But that's an interesting uh, request.
So are there any systems or pipelines in the work to support users with motion sickness or cannot normally react with VR content? Um, I would say then that that would be our uh, mobile solutions or our viewer solutions where you can still feel, you can still load it up on the desktop and still be present there, but um, you don't have to be wearing a headset. So we're going to make that uh, more widely available soon. How many meetings can be at the same time? Um, that's really a, a business decision on our side. Right now, there's no limit. Um, we can scale that up because we're harnessing the back end of HTC and our global servers. If um, we can scale up um, globally if we need to. So we're, that's something that we're constantly evaluating. But it should not be a concern of anyone from the end user. If you need a meeting, you should be able to have a meeting. Any thoughts on integrating with proprietary game engines for viewing assets and rendering environments? That is something that uh, we're definitely looking into. So if uh, you have more information or any specific requests, please send that to us and we will definitely look uh, into that for sure. Okay. Is there are there a moderator feature? So we don't have a full moderator system. We do. Um, we are working on host controls, and that's primarily for sharing um, to be able to lock out uh, whether you can share or to mute. So in a classroom environment, or you know, most business meetings, people are respectful and understand. It's like okay, someone's talking. But when you're dealing with a uh, um, some unruly kids, or you just want to make sure everyone can be quiet, or someone, then uh, we're definitely going to add some of those basic features and then just slowly uh, roll that out uh, as necessary. Uh, stand up tools would be awesome. Scrum board notes, voting notes. Ooh, voting notes. Uh, we, we do not have voting notes now, but that's actually uh, um, an interesting request. I will add that down. Right now, I guess we can always right now use a, your 3D pen to make hash marks or to do your own kind of hand counting one, but that's a, to, an integrated voting system would be interesting. So we'll look into that. Yeah, and then finally, as far as invitations, uh, yeah, we will uh, get in two weeks or, or not two weeks, uh, in a couple weeks, we will be uh, releasing all this information so we can see. As far as invitations, I will uh, direct you to our um, PR team and we can see how we can get uh, more people, even before the first two weeks, we can get maybe some people uh, access, access to the closed beta version. And I think that's it. All right, well, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, I appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to sharing more information. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to uh, Vive and we will uh, definitely get you uh, all the other answers um, that you're looking for. Okay, thank you.